Hey everybody, Daniel Ramsey here with My Outdesk. And oh my goodness, I've got a story for you real quick before we get started with our special guest. So I'm, I'm doing my morning routine and this morning and I'm texting with my broker and I have, I'm trying to buy a commercial property right now. And it's at an intersection with a lot of traffic. And it's just this ideal little piece of property that is like an L shaped on one of the best neighborhoods in town. And so I text my broker. I'm like, man, why haven't you gotten back to me? We submitted an offer like seven days ago. And you know what he says? He goes, oh, I don't know. I haven't heard from the, the sellers, like the seller's agent. And here's the thing, guys. I have 1,200 real estate virtual assistants right here and right now. And I'm, I'm telling the guy, I'm like, you need an assistant. We are getting into the busy time. We are getting into where 70% of all real estate transactions are happening in the next three to four months. Like 70% of the 5 million transactions are going to happen in the next three to four months. And if you don't have an assistant, then you are an assistant. And if you're listening, Tony, my broker, my commercial broker, you need better assistance, man, to help you keep organized and to take things off of your plate so you can drive revenue. So anyways, that's my rant. Uh, but if you're listening right now, uh, we've got a special guest. Um, first of all, what we like to do is bring people who are crushing it in a particular area so you can model that, you know, that in your own business, regardless of where you are in the country. So today we have a special guest, Christoph Cho. He's, he's the owner of Christoph Cho Real Estate Group. He's in LA in, in, in basically one of the the highest end property areas of California. And here's what he's known for what, and why we brought him on. Uh, Bomb Bomb, who is a real estate email video platform, listed him as the number one influencer in video marketing for the 2018 year. And what's cool about this is Christoph today is gonna share with us the down and dirty, the details, exactly what he does in social media and video to drive huge listing volume and really make a difference for his clients. So Christoph, thanks for being here, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here with you and your company and doing this uh, video cast and helping share my knowledge to help other agents and brokers all around the world and the country. So it's a great thing you're doing. Yeah, it's, that's what we do, man. And what's cool is we serve the top 1,000 agents across the country. Um, we've been blessed to be in, in business 12 years in the real estate virtual assistant game. And all we want to do is make the industry better. So we have people like you, Christoph, come in and knock it out of the park. So Christoph, talk to us about your story. Like, I always like to start these things off with a couple questions like how did you get into real estate, you know, and why did you decide to do the social media video influencer kind of marketing? Good question. Stories are always good because people can relate to stories. So, um, and it goes way back because I've been selling real estate now for 32 years. It's hard to believe that more than half of my life I've been selling real estate. So, um, you know, I was a regular student in a highly gifted classes from when I was very young, but I didn't like to study. I didn't like going to school. School was too boring and a little bit too slow for me. I just wasn't a good student per se. I mean, I didn't get top grades because, you know, especially in high school, I ditched a lot of high school. I barely graduated, um, lost my scholarship because I did so much. And my was, you know, I remember two weeks before high school was over, my parents came back from a five week trip to Europe and the counselor called that afternoon when they got home and said, your son's not graduating, he's failing all of his classes. So that was the end of that. Uh, but I did graduate, like I crammed for the finals and I passed and I, and, but I was also a fashion model at the time. So I didn't really care. I thought I'm gonna be a model, photographer, you know, who cares about school? School wasn't gonna help me with that. And uh, so I started dating my wife now of 26 years. And she said to me, I was traveling quite a bit to Europe and Asia modeling. And I'd be gone three weeks, three months at a time. And she said, how about getting a more stable job? And I was 18 years old and <laughs> didn't know anything. And she said, how about real estate? And as a young 18 year old, I honestly thought I could drive a fancy car, be my own boss, show pretty houses and make a lot of money. That's what I really thought. I had no idea that there was such a thing as escrows and title and inspections and loans and appraisals and all that stuff. I just thought you just show houses and you make money. I had no clue. Right. So uh, I was modeling that summer, took my, came back, took my, uh, passed my real estate exam. I went to interview, I was living in Los Feliz area at the time, which is part of Los Angeles with my family. Still, I was 18. And I interviewed at the local John Douglas office because that was the number one company in LA. It was luxury and that's what I wanted to do. 
they wouldn't hire me. The manager asked me what my goals and dreams were, and I said, well, I'm going to make a million dollars a year, and this is in 1988 or 87, I think 87. Sure. I'm going to make a million dollars a year and drive a Rolls Royce. Well, she thought I was crazy, so she didn't hire me. <laughs> So I went to the next closest John Douglas office, which was in Hancock Park, about a five, six mile drive. Interviewed yeah. there, and she hired me. First year, I was doing two open houses a week, up desk, floor desk, as you call it, getting those incoming calls. Nothing was happening. Uh, I think the first year I got a listing for 43000 I sold it, but it was a $1,732 commission. I remember that very well. It was my first commission. Nice. And the manager said to me, you know, Christoph, you've been here for over a year. You've only done one sale. You've got to get some business going in the next 90 days or you're going to be kicked out of the office. Well, I don't want to be kicked out of the office. So I went to a, a Roger Butcher seminar. I don't know if you know that name. And he taught me how to call expired listings and for sale by owners. So I started doing that. Started sending letters to every expired, calling them, door knocking them, and I started building my business. So that's how that all started. And I started doing really well. Um, went from 1,700 to 30,000 to 60,000 to 120 to 250, like doubling every year. And I was at a certain point, maybe eight years into it, I was one of, I think the second or first agent, top agent in that office. Hold and on, I, Christoph. There's so much good goodies <laughs> in all of what you just said. So I want to unpack I that. Class, so. Yeah, yeah. So when, when um, clients come to us, we always, we do something called a double my business strategy call. Okay. And you just confirmed the possibilities like I've I've seen really big teams who are doing two or three hundred transactions double to six hundred I've seen five hundred you know transaction teams go to a thousand and I've seen brand new agents who did five deals literally do ten the next year then twenty then forty right. um, let's break down your early Christoph like your uh, let's call it baby Christoph right <laughs> you know baby real estate Christoph what um, is it possible when you're, you, you're, you know, building a team and building a business to double on a consistent basis? What's required if it is? Well, back in those days, I mean, it, it was, first of all, when I started out, there was no, I don't think it was barely even the internet. Computers were just starting out. There were fax machines were just coming out. It was a very different era. So, yes. uh, so in those days, I mean, I literally went from nothing for the first eight to 10 years and I built my business solely on prospecting, meaning just Look, I was 18, 19 years old. I didn't know anybody my age was buying or selling. Right. So, okay, these people couldn't sell their house and they want to sell their house. So why not go to that audience that's looking? And I just, you know, I was in coaching. I learned about scripts and dialogues and all that training. Yes. And uh, so uh, it was very, and I remember when I started coaching, it was $1,000 a month way back in like 1992. And I didn't know if I could afford it. But I, in my mind, I thought, okay, it's going to be 120, I mean, 12,000 for the 12 months of coaching. But in my mind, I knew I would get a 10 time return on that investment. And I've been in ever since continuously for, I don't know how, 28 years. So. Okay, okay. So what, you've, what you're saying, and I wanna clear this, you're, you're, you were fanatically um, focused on prospecting. Yep. And then you invested in yourself yep. by having a coach. Absolutely. How many doubles did you get from just those two things? You mean doubling my business? Yeah. Uh, it went on for like seven or eight years, pretty much, I think. You just yeah. doubled every year for seven yeah. or eight years yeah. because with yeah. those two strategies. That's pretty much it, yep. Yeah, because yeah, there, awesome. there was nothing else other than prospecting in those days. Yeah. And so a little, 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 you know, you build past clients and sphere and all that. That's down the road. That's how I more got into luxury. But that's how it started in the beginning. It was all, and when I left Hancock Park to move to Beverly Hills, which is where I am now for the last 20-ish years, maybe 20 yeah. years. Um, my average price in Hancock Park was, I think, 282000 at that time. Right. And I was doing maybe 50 to 65 transactions a year. Now in Beverly Hills, it can average $5 million, $9 million, sometimes $12 million, depending on the, the deals I do that year. So, yeah. uh, so that was the, kind of the transition. But interesting, you talked about assistants. Uh, I had an assistant, I think, my second or third year in real estate. I've had assistants my entire, you know, probably 28, 29 years of my 32 year career. I knew early on having an assistant was critical and you know, we didn't have virtual assistants and things like that in those days. Yeah. Um, but so I had a physical assistant in my office, you know, five days a week. So that's very, very important because uh, you, know, I, I, you know, we study things like how much your time is worth per hour and my yeah. time per hour is in the thousands of dollars. So it's more than an attorney gets. 
So I thought, why would I be doing $20 an hour work when I'm making thousands of dollars an hour? So uh, and even back in the day, it wasn't thousands an hour, it was hundreds an hour, but still it was more than I was paying an assistant. Right. And that math is what we do for our clients. You're, you're, I love interviewing you, man. You're, you're like, you're like our poster child for helping real estate people grow because so you're, you know, coaching, prospecting fanatically, you know, focused on that. Once you've got those two things down, you're ready to start building a team. And when you start building a team, the doubles become faster, meaning there's leverage in it. So it's like a snowball and the, and the snowball has gotten really, really big. How um, having an assistant and building a team, what has that done to your volume and your increases and the, the speed at which you've been able to double? Well, it certainly helps a lot. I mean, having you know, an assistant, marketing director and people to support you. I mean, I basically have four jobs. One is to talk to people I don't know and people I know, negotiate yes. contracts, um, and you know, find more clients and get the deals done. So it's, it's pretty simple. So I should not be involved in other things. Now, of course, planning, brainstorming, uh, setting goals and plans for what you're gonna do, that's also important because, but then you have to have the infrastructure and the people in place to forward your ideals, thoughts, and plans. Right. Okay. So I love what you're saying. As the leader, your job is strategy, talking to clients, getting clients, and negotiating deals. Yep. And in your world, everything else should be given away to an assistant. Is that is that kind of how you're? you're Pretty much. I, I will say those certain things I do my I don't do myself, but I do oversee myself, such as uh, photo shoots and video shoots. I think those are very very critical aspects, and I've tried to let go of those things, meaning. Just, you know, with my sister or marketing director, have tell them, you know, go with them to the house, take pictures of, and show them the angles I want in certain rooms, make sure they know to make sure everything's symmetrical and the pillows are properly placed, all that stuff. But yes, no one seems to be as detailed or thorough as I am. So I've learned that I kind of have to be there, which is a little bit time consuming. And then with videos, I have to be there because I'm often in the videos doing introductions and walking tours and that kind of thing. So, so I do try to outsource or, or have people do a lot of the work, but there's certain things I still have to do, even though I'm not supposed to. But I just know if I, if I leave certain things like photos and videos to their own, I'm usually not happy with the results. Um, yes. There's an eye for detail. And when I'm there, I'm like, they'll take a picture and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that lamp is off kilter, the cord is showing, you know, those kinds of things, which I know doesn't mean that much, but I, I guess it does to me. Well, you know what I love about what you're saying is, you don't have to be the, the videographer, you don't have to be the, the video producer, Producer, but you do have to be the director Absolutely. in your videos and yeah. in your online presence kind of, you know, brand. Is that, is that how you would put it? Absolutely. Yeah, I've never edited a, vi edited a video in my life. I don't do that. It's, right. it's just beyond my comprehension, but I do very much produce it. I'm definitely a producer because it takes a while to think of the plan for the video, especially for a house. I mean, you know, depending on the position of the house, you have morning light in the front, you have afternoon light in the back. So sometimes you have to shoot it two or three times. You have cloudy mornings. You have, you know, in LA, we sometimes have cloudy mornings. So you got to shoot the inside one day and shoot the outside another day when it's sunny. So there's a lot of involvement. And then I have to, in my mind, put together the storyline of the video yes. and say how it's going to flow. And then what I sometimes, I don't do it as much now, I would have the videographer send me all the raw footage. I want to look through it. Particularly when I have a property that's 40 or 50 or $60 million, I take a lot of extra time and care in that because it's a very special property and has a lot of special unique features. So I have to really plan it out, look at all the footage and they may have 30 minutes of living room footage and I'll look through right. all the footage because even though we're only going to have a one minute video and a four minute video, I need to know out of those 10 clips, clip number four, 15 seconds to 28 seconds, that's the shot I want in this particular part. So I will storyline it. I will send the videographer kind of an outline of the videos I want and we've, we've maximized it's all on Google Drive. Uh, I can make the notes on the video itself on Google Drive so they just have access to it. Um, and then that way they can create the first, second or third edit based on my, my thoughts. But, but yeah, pr producing things is very important, but it's important to have the right people behind you to implement those things. And they need the awesome. experts in their field. This is awesome. I love what you're saying. I think I'm. It, it's so the case as 
leaders and owners, we have to rely on others to execute for us because they have specific skills that like you and I just don't have. I hated school and I can't sit at a computer and I am not detail oriented. And I think that's the norm for us real estate people is we just, we aren't, we need to rely on others to execute for us, but keep the vision, you know, there. We've got a ton of panelists and, and a lot of people who are here attending. I, I saw Matt Wagner in. What's up, buddy? Um, and I'm, I just want to let everybody know um, it's really hot here in California. Christoph and I are like, wow. It's, it, it was 82 degrees at 7 a.m. in Sacramento, California. It's like, it is going to be a hot one. But if you're listening right now, I'd love you to just kind of say, yo, what's up? And where you're from and what, how hot it is um, where you're at. Plus, I want you to know that Christoph and I are going to answer questions because we're here to, we're here, I mean, we're here to give love and value to the folks that are um, on this call and listening in our audience. And this is going to go out to everybody. Um, Christoph, let's, let's break down, let's talk a little bit about your story because you, you, you know, we reached out to you for a really specific reason you've been doing social media and video on property before it was cool like right. it's cool now yeah. but 10 years ago when you were heavy in it nobody else was doing that right. and so i just want to break down that story and then if you're in the audience stay with us because christoph's going to give us his exact approach to how he does social media and how he use it, directs a video for his listings. And we're talking about multi-million dollar listings. So that's a really good question. And um, uh, let's, so let's go back and it's, it's all related back to coaching and having the right people behind you. So Tom Ferry was my coach at the time and I still coach with him and his company. Nice. And uh, he's the number one coach in the world as far as I know for real estate. And I was at his uh, top producer retreat in Palm Desert. It was yeah. middle of August, uh, it was 118 degrees, not wow. quite like today but it is hot in here so forgive me for sweating but i'm in the sunlight in the window and it's the air conditioning's on but it's still hot so i'm at the conference and gary v gary vaynerchuk was there yeah never yeah. Heard, heard never heard of him before didn't know who he was so we had met in person and then after lunch he had uh the conference and i'm sitting in the front row and google had just purchased youtube and in those days this is going back 10 11 years ago and right. in those days the, the the websites and the blog were king meaning the websites were king. You had to have a blog. And, and I transitioned from the lower end market, first of all, to Beverly Hills 10 years before, physically. Yes. And then, and then I started uh, my social world to, to build that personal referral network of high end sellers and buyers because I have to live it, breathe it, be it, and live there in order to attract those kinds of clients. So, yeah. That was, but, but, you know, like, we're, the world was changing and it's changing even more quickly today. So Gary said, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you are so fast and I'm going to slow you down because uh, first I want to say, what's up, Hector? He's in San Gabriel Valley. It's only 78 degrees there. Wow. Christoph, you said something that is so valuable. If you're listening and you want to make a transition from, uh, you know, regular real estate where you're, you're, 300, 400, the national average. And if you want to start selling multi-million dollar homes, Christoph says you have to live it, breathe it, be it, and, and talk a little bit about that transition. Because I think it's an important point. You've transitioned from a regular real estate person in LA right. to the point where you've sold a $50 million property. And that's a big deal. Most right. people don't do that transition. So talk to us about that. That's a, another long... So basically... Most people contact me and want to learn about how to get into luxury. They're selling real estate, but they want to be a quote unquote luxury. Agent. Luxury, right. First of all, it really has to be internally who you are in order for you to sell it. That's number one. It was always internally who I was, even though my parents, I did not come from a wealthy family by any means. My mom was a hairdresser, owned a beauty shop. My stepfather worked for a rare art book company. Uh, I was exposed to traveling to Europe and exposed to art and culture at a young age. So I did have exposure. And I had teachers at a young age, starting in junior high school, that saw some spark in me or saw something different and saw that I wanted something different and yeah. opened my eyes to the world of wealth and luxury. It was a particular teacher in junior high school that was my yearbook teacher, my um, uh, art teacher, 
And she started showing me all these ma luxury magazines, which I had never been exposed to about the luxury world of luxury people, properties. And then I was like so enamored by this. And I just started following that. Um, yeah. oh, so the question was how to get into luxury. Oh, yeah. So, so back a little bit further. So first year, 1700 then income kept going up. The fifth year in the business, I think I'd earned 250000 uh, 1993, because that's the year I got married. So we were getting married and we decided to go on a, a trip to Europe and a trip to Asia uh, for our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. and I remember the trip at that time cost about $60,000 for this whole vacation, which was about a quarter of my gross income for the year. Yes. But in my mind, mindset again is so important. In my mind, I worked so hard every day of the year I was okay to spend a quarter of my income to travel for six weeks and live really the life that I thought was the real life, the life of luxury. And I've always, and I thought, if I don't go the best, I'm not gonna go. So we went first class, went on the best cruise ship, penthouse suites, the best hotels, everything. I mean, six star, five star, all the way. And the magic thing that, and I believe in miracles, I believe in magic and every day in my affirmations, I say that I expect miracles each and every day, and they do happen. And we were on this cruise with a thousand people uh, in the Mediterranean for two weeks. And uh, we had a little roster of, of all the names of the people on the ship. And there was a couple from Beverly Hills and I had not yet moved to Beverly Hills. Uh, yeah. But this couple, we happened to by chance be laying at the pool one day, sitting next to this couple, happened to be them. We started mm -hmm. chatting and became friends. Somehow the universe put us together on the, on the deck. Yeah. That the one couple that I really wanted to meet from LA or Beverly Hills. We met, started chatting, became friends. So maybe six months, a year later, we kept in touch. We became friends with them. They sent me a referral. And from that referral, it, it was a 24 unit condo building in Beverly Hills that actually the owners decided just to lease, just to do leases. But back in 1994, we were leasing those units from 5,000 to 12,000 a month. And I was right. running the leases for the whole building. Yeah. Uh, and so from that, from that cruise, met so many clients from that building that I think to date from that one cruise, I believe if I've calculated over my time, I think I've run over $2.2 million in 20 some years from that cruise. So that $60,000 expense has monetized itself many, many times over. But I've always said, do what you love, be authentic about what you love and, and be, do the right thing, be kind to people, give them appreciation, affection, attention, and the universe will provide you with blessings from that. So that's kind of how that started. But then physically, I moved to Beverly Hills and started working physically in this area. My, I moved my office to Beverly Hills, that is. Then I moved my home a few years later here because I was commuting an hour, an hour and a half each way to come to work to Beverly Hills. Right, right. But I did that. I mean, that's, I wanted to be here. And so we started building the, so once we had some connections in Beverly Hills, we started building that social network, going to the parties, going to the events, then physically move my office, then I'm more involved, physically moved our home, more involved. So now I don't really get outside of a two mile bubble of Beverly Hills too often. Um, right. but, but it was kind of a, a gentle transition on different levels. But it starts from having the dream, the intention, the desire. Uh, and back in 1992, my previous coach said, you have to have an intention for your perfect client. He says, you, if you don't know who your perfect client is, you're not gonna attract them. And back then, and so ingrained in my brain, I want clients who love me, trust me, respect me, will follow my advice, are rich and fun, and I can be friends with. That's my client. So yeah. whenever I'm out somewhere, that's what I'm looking for. And that's what I attract. So it's the law of attraction. So that's kind of how it went from, you know, believing in yourself, spending the money, you got to spend money to make money, and then putting yourself physically in that environment, and then really training yourself. Training has been my whole career. I still train all the time. Uh, yes. because you have to constantly be getting better. So going back uh, with the social media marketing that Gary Vaynerchuk said, uh, Google bought YouTube. Um, he says, you're Mr. Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. You're Beverly Hills. He said, yeah. you need to be a DJ for content in your community. Those are his exact words. And he said, Life he said Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And I remember that was one of my favorite shows in the 80s. I love that yeah. show. Um, and so that afternoon at 5.30, when the, the day was over, I went to Best Buy, I bought my first flip cam video camera. My yeah. assistant was with me at the conference. I bought a tripod. I went on the balcony of my hotel. I had a beautiful view of the mountains and the lake at the hotel. And I did a quick two-minute video, my first video ever. It's still on YouTube. 
And I said, what the heck am I doing in Palm Desert in the middle of August when it's 118 degrees? And I talked about I'm at a conference and I'm learning, growing, trying to help build my business, help serve my clients better, make it more streamlined and all that stuff. And that was my first video. And also actually during, uh, that, during, the, during the conference, I was on my phone, I went on GoDaddy, actually on my computer I think it was at the break, and I went on GoDaddy and I bought all the lifestyles of the rich and famous domains, which were actually available. So I bought those. So that's how it started. And then Gary said another thing. He said, from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night, you're working in your business. When you're out there, you're showing, you're you know, doing day-to-day -day stuff. He says, from eight o'clock at night till midnight, you need to work on your business. That was another key, key point that helped catapult my business. So at that point in time, I was not on any social media platform, nothing, no, I mean, nothing. So he basically said, every day, just start a new platform, log in, set up an account. That's what I did. So I started, I think LinkedIn was my first and Facebook. And I spent, I think probably six or nine months really immersing myself in that whole world of every social media platform, learning about them, what they do and testing and trying, testing and trying. Tom Ferry always says, always ABT, always be testing. So even yes. to this day, I'm always testing and trying. So with all the new technology, uh, and now that I'm a video influencer, many companies send me their cameras and send me their, their things to use and test out because they want me to, yeah. as an influencer, to, to get people to buy their products. So, but I'm always testing and trying things. Um, yeah. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I try it. And that's why with like videos, we do the high production expensive videos. But also I will tell you, my just walking tour videos with my phone in a house are more popular to the consumer than the fancy high production videos. I'll do a very expensive production video and I'll do a walking tour. I'll typically get four to five times more views on my just handheld phone walking tour of that house. So I just do everything. Um, I test and try, I have fun with it, make it interesting and fun and, and try to just do things, just try it out and you never know what's gonna work. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, hey, we have Mary from Indianapolis, but you didn't tell us how hot it was, Mary. Um, and guys, uh, we're, we're ready for the question portion of, of the call. Um, we are going to definitely ask Christoph to outline how he produces his videos. That's the one, that's the secret sauce. And then when, once you have the videos, where do you put them to generate real estate commissions? Because I hate all of the influencers out there that post videos but they don't equate it to how they made commission, right? So we're gonna be very, very specific. It's 75 degrees in Indianapolis. That's not bad. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, but Christoph, uh, let's, let's, let's do this. Um, walk us through your process for being a producer or a director on your listing properties with video. On a production video or just like a self video? Let's do, let's, I mean, it sounds like you do the production video, but that's for the seller because they want a fancy video, right? Well, it's for the seller and it's also for me because it's a branding tool. Um, okay, I got like you. High production video. And, and I, I learned how to do high production videos because I've been on a lot of TV shows, both yep. as a cast member on HGTV and a lot of other, you know, I've been on, I don't know, maybe 20 different TV shows where I showcase mansions in Beverly Hills and all that. So I kind of follow the formats and whenever I'm in a production for a TV show, I really pay attention to the producer, I pay attention to the cinematographer, I talk to them, I see what they do, I really, really study them. Uh, so that I kind of take the best of all the people I meet and incorporate that into my own videos. All right, let's go, let's go through the high production video value of a property, like, you know, walk us through that, um, how it looks, what you do, like give us the step-by-step -step and, okay. and work. So, so, those so I had a listing a year ago that was 58 million and incredible property, one of the largest properties in a certain part of Beverly Hills, 27,000 square foot house with two guest houses. So it's a, it's a very big property physically to shoot, right? And it's yeah. very special and very unique. And uh, it, it's the only house in existence in Los Angeles or Beverly Hills that has too many trains on the property. I mean, it's such a big property, <laughs> like the Disneyland trains, because the owner knew um, Walt yeah. Disney. Yeah. Walt, Walt had a train at his house in Holmby Hills, which is right nearby. And so he saw the trains and he loves, the owner loved trains. So he had Walt's people at the Disney studios make two trains for him at the house. So, so it was a very special and unique house at tennis courts, you know, at every amenity you could even, and it was a really beautiful, very opulent European style manner, I would call it. 
Uh -huh. um, so, so first of all, I get the listing signed. It's very exciting. It can sometimes take me a little time to come up with kind of the concepts. So, uh, and usually that happens during the quiet time, meaning I do get, I do meditations every day. I get massages yes. once a week, chiropractic. So when I'm, particularly when I'm getting my massage and I'm, my mind is quiet, that's kind of when the, the magic thoughts come to me like, oh, do this and do that. So, yep. come, okay, how am I going to shoot it? What am I going to do? Um, so that's number one. Number two, it's, it's, it's very thought intensive and time intensive. For example, that house, we had to shoot over five different days. Uh, each shoot day was between five to seven hours uh, per day to shoot because, you know, this particular house was situated, the front faced west, the back faced east. So obviously the garden, you know, you need the sunlight in the middle of the day so there's no shadows from the trees and things like that. Right, right. Half of the house had to be shot in the earlier morning because the sunlight was on the back from the sunrise in the east. The, the front shot of the house had to be shot in the late afternoon because the sun was in the front. So that's, first of all, it's timing and coordination and owners have to be willing to allow you to do that. Then we have weather issues. Some days it rained, we had to cancel. Uh, and you, you still have to book the photographers and videographers and stuff to pay them. So that's a little bit of an issue. But so you have to really, I have to really plan out that whole part of it. And in this what particular I'm, house- What I'm hearing you, I, I wanna, I'm, again, I'm gonna slow you down. What I'm hearing is you have to pay <laughs> attention to the sun, to the shadows of the, and, and, and also how the house is facing to right. optimize the video. Right. Why, why is that so important? And, and I ask, okay, so I'm a real estate broker. I love it. I have a guy call me one day and he says, hey, I need help selling my house. I said, no problem, what's the house? And he, ha he heard me on radio. So um, I was on uh, radio with Rate and, and Matt Wagner's show. He calls because he's listening to the morning drive. He says, Daniel, I need help. I, I hear you're the best in town. At that time, I was number 14 out of 9,000 realtors. He calls me, I look at his property in the MLS and the second photo was a photo of a bathroom <laughs> with a pink toilet and a hairbrush that oh. had hair on it. And so like, I was like, I, dude, you don't need me. You need a better agent. You just need somebody to take real pictures and highlight your property. And, and, and um, anyways, we ended up getting the listing, selling it, helping them out. But um, I think the average agent doesn't understand what you so simply understand, right? So yeah. talk to us a little bit more about like the positioning and like, you know, how, like break that down for us. It's a science. I will. And, and it goes even back, like it just came to me in my mind. It goes even back to before I even get to the point of how I'm going to do it. I have to think of who is the buyer. Yes. That's so important. Who is, I mean, what's the age demographic? Are they a local buyer potentially? Are they an international buyer? Who is the buyer? So that's very important because you have to create the video and target the video to that kind of audience. So this particular house I figured is not going to be, it's, it's a, real mansion style property, very opulent, very old yes. world. When you walked in the entry, it was like walking into a beautiful house in Paris. I mean, it was very, very French, European, filled with incredible antiques and art, very, very, very extremely high end. I mean, like walking yes. into a museum. So your typical young millennial or young 20 year old isn't gonna be interested in that kind of house. So, so obviously it wouldn't be a funky, cool video. It wouldn't be a hip music. It's a whole different thing. So that's, I have to look at that demographic. So I think of that process and how to make it feel old school and opulent, but yet since it's a, it's a very heavy house, it's very formal, how to make it a little bit more light. So it's a little bit more appealing and not so, because some people might think it's, oh, it's too heavy and too, too fancy for me maybe, right? So how I got do you. So your job is to kind of take the video and whatever the property is, try to make it appeal to the broadest market possible. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, we've got a question from Angela. Angela, I love your question. I'm going to let Christoph finish this kind of uh, list and then we'll get right to it. Um, Christoph. No, I'll just, oh yeah. Do you want to answer the question first or? Yeah, man, let's do it. Angela is curious about your opinion on followers. Like um, sh she asks, is it smart to hire a company to buy followers, which is, is a thing you can do nowadays? or do you build your followers organically from people who know you, trust you, and may want to do business with you? 
So good question. I think it's an excellent question. I would never, ever, ever buy any followers. I never have and never will. Uh, every social media expert I talk to says it's, it's not a good idea. You're better off having few followers that are really good followers. It's more important who follows you than how many people follow you. So definitely do not buy followers. It's all got to be organic. Um, all my social media followers, and I have quite a, in the hundreds of thousands on all the platforms, they're all organic. And for example, like my personal Instagram, it's a private page. So even though it's private, I still have a lot of organic followers. I don't know how they find me if I'm you know, private, but yet never, ever, ever buy followers. So getting well, back- and, Yeah. And Angela, I, I want, there's no cheap or easy ways to, to be a real like um, influencer in the world. I mean, I just, people always want to buy their way to success. And we find it all the time when somebody is like, can, can I hire an assistant who knows how to do my Facebook, all, knows how to do my media, knows everything. And, I'm, and like Christoph, you have to be the director of your own movie and you can have assistants who help you with all the details of it. And that's what we provide. But I just think you can't hitchhike in somebody else's car, you know? Yeah, and that's a good question because all of my social media posts are my own. I mean, and I and I to me a social media post has to be kind of time specific. Morning, I do I try to do four to five a day. First thing in the morning when I wake up, it's something inspirational, a flower, a plant, something that's just meaningful to me. And again, I post what's meaningful to me. And when you do that, you will attract those that like your kind of things that you like and will want to do business with you. So. So I post it all on my own. Now, it's okay to create the single post and the content and the words and then give it to your social media person or your assistant and have them post it on all the other platforms. That's fine. Yes. You have to tweak it. for, But you've got to come up with the content yourself. It's got to be from your heart. Because when I have a marketing director and I've, had, I've tried to have them, you know, I said, here's a photo. Come up with some content and create a post. I never like what they say. And I take more time trying to fix it and change it than if I just take 30 seconds and just voice in my phone in the notes and just say what I want to say, have them implement it. So, so don't, don't buy followers and create your own posts and try to do it something that's relative to what's going on in your local world or the world itself. I yeah. think that's a very important factor. I think that's great that you're, you're helping people understand how to use an assistant. Uh, I'll give an example. Um, one of our uh, PR and media people reached out to Christoph. You, you talked to Elle. Um, who kind of set this all up. And then we have Alvin who's on the call right now and he set up the video and he set up the, the post about what we're going to talk about. He sent out the email. He posted across, you know, our, our team posted across all the social media, but I'm doing this interview because Christoph and I are going to be buds, man. And, and if you're listening right now, like it's, 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 it's because we're the experts and people don't want to hear from our assistants. So I think that's a, but there's a lot of 70, 80% of the work can be done by your assistant, but the content has to come from you. Yeah. And I think, so, I don't know the exact numbers. When I look at my, I think some platforms show you how many posts you had or how many tweets you've done. And I think I'm running in the range of 40 to 60,000 posts since I started this 10, 11 years ago. So, I do put a lot of content out there. Uh, there's no question there's a lot of it. But you know, social media is an opportunity today that's basically free, where you have an opportunity to brand yourself. And all I care about on social media is four things. You need to know my name, you need to know Beverly Hills, luxury and real estate. That's all that's gotta come across. And it could be the luxury lifestyle of a great restaurant, it could be luxury of a beautiful home, it could be luxury of uh, enjoying a beautiful garden and relaxing and meditating. Those are all luxuries in different ways so but that's that's what social media is all about you have a quarter of a second split second to capture someone's attention it's going to be meaningful useful fun and interesting for them to pay attention so if you create the right content people will follow you automatically so name the area the area luxury, luxury for me and real estate ah uh, okay that's all that they really need to think about so as an example, uh, LinkedIn, I have a lot, I have maybe 14,000 followers on LinkedIn and yes. it's not a particularly um, interactive platform uh, yes. on LinkedIn. We, we should be friends on LinkedIn, which I will follow you later on. So, uh, but I don't know about lately on LinkedIn, you get all these friend requests or, or follow or whatever, the connection requests and I accept everyone. And, uh, but then immediately, especially the last few months, you start getting those spam emails, just like a cut and paste private message. 
Oh, buy my, mostly it's selling me lead systems, like four or five a day. Oh, buy leads, buy leads, buy, I just don't even look at those. Then the other ones are mostly mortgage brokers saying, oh, we'll help you get refinanced, we'll help you this and that. Well, most of my deals are cash. I don't need a mortgage broker. And if I do, I've got two or three that I've used for 20, 30 years. I don't need you that I don't even know to do business right. with. So, so I just, right. it was just, it frustrated me on Monday. I just, I opened up my LinkedIn and they were like, you know, 30 new requests. I accepted them and right away, like 10, you know, spam. Oh, buy this, buy that, do this, do that. And I'm like, I just said, forget it. I did a quick two minute video, just put my camera up and I talked about the Facebook etiquette. And I said, this is not how you do a business. You need to, people need to know you, like you, trust you before they'll do business with you. So don't right. friend me and then immediately try to sell me something. It's not going to work. And LinkedIn doesn't usually get a lot of interaction, but that particular post video has had quite a few thousand views, I think 130 comments. And this morning I realized, I didn't know, 27 shares, which is very unusual for a LinkedIn platform. But obviously that particular content was very precise to that platform. And everyone else that was commenting said they all thought the same thing, but I took the time and it took me two minutes to put up the camera, record the video, no editing, and just post the video. And, and, and since then, I think I got another 200 LinkedIn connections since Monday because people saw that video, people shared that video. And people are like, well, who's this guy? I wanna to get to know him. So, so sharing valuable things to people, you know, LinkedIn is one thing, Facebook's another, Twitter and Instagram are other things. So share what you think is valuable and hopefully it'll work. And to get back to, because we've had a lot of questions, monetizing videos. <laughs> Money from it, right? That is such yes. an important factor because I started with videos that summer with Tom Ferry of 2007 or 8, whatever the year was. Yeah. And I started doing videos very consistently and coaching with Tom. And I think it was either three or four years into doing videos consistently, maybe not as consistently as today because now I see more of the value, but it was, I was 400 and some videos into it, meaning on my YouTube channel. Now I have 2,800 videos on my YouTube channel. But yeah, just a couple, just yeah. a couple. At 400 some videos, maybe four or 500 subscribers at that time. And I remember I was on the phone with Tom. I said, Tom, because I don't want to take on an endeavor unless I can monetize it, ROI. Yes. If yes. I'm going to spend X amount of dollars on this marketing platform or this tool, I want a five to 10 time return on that investment. So video after video and nothing was happening. And I track these things. Whenever someone calls, how'd you find out about me? You know, right. was it the internet? Was it a referral? Whatever. So nothing. And Tom said, keep doing what you're doing. It's going to work. Just keep doing it. Just keep being consistent with it. So yeah. I, kept doing it. I think within 30 days thereafter, I get a random phone call. Uh, but being prepared is so important. I get a random phone call. I'm at the office. My assistant says, this lady wants to talk to you about buying a house. I pick up the phone. I'm talking to her. She had just dropped her daughter off at school. She had a 30 minute commute back home. They've been looking for a house for a year and a half. They weren't happy with their broker, their buyer's agent. Uh, they wanted to find someone new. And I said, what are you looking for? We want to buy a house for 10 to 12 million. We're going to then sell our house after that. And it's worth around 5 million. Great. And I said, how did you find out about me? She says, oh, I saw a couple of your videos. I said, really? I said, which videos? She said, I saw your driving tour of Stone Canyon Road. I said, really? And, she's, and, and, I said, and she said, I saw your helicopter tour video. I said, well, what made you decide to call me from those two videos? She says, one, you were really honest. I said, really, how so was I honest? She says, on your driving tour of Stone Canyon, and Stone Canyon is a part of Bel Air, which is a very, very expensive neighborhood, yep. about a five, six minute drive from Beverly Hills. And I said, it's five, six minutes from Beverly Hills. It's north of Sunset. It's called Stone Canyon because it's a canyon. There's a main street and there's little offshoot streets, but you're in a canyon. And I said, if you're a sun lover, this may not be for you because the sun will rise a couple hours later in the morning and we'll set a couple hours earlier in the afternoon. Because I've sold houses in that location. And you could be there at 10 o'clock in the morning on a, in the summertime and you still have shade in your backyard because the mountain is still blocking the sun. Right. So she said, we were about to buy a house on that street for $12 million and we came in the afternoon and there was no sun at the pool. So she liked the honesty and I was very honest in my driving tour talking about the pros and cons of the neighborhood. And then so the helicopter video said, what made you talk to me about that? Well, she said, if you spend that much money on a helicopter tour of the most expensive homes in LA, you'll spend money to market my home. So great. So uh, interesting. She said, my husband's a, bit a lawyer. He's a partner in a very big real estate law firm, real estate law firm of all things. 
and uh, he wants to interview you to be our buyer's agent. I said, okay. I said, what does he want to meet? Monday at 8.30. Monday at 8.30, oh, at night. So uh, I went there Monday at 8.30 at night. He's an attorney, had a pinstripe suit with a tie and the vest, the whole thing, yellow notepad. And so our first conversation was with the wife 30 minutes or so on the phone. So I get to the house at 8.30, the husband's there. I open up my yellow notepad because he's an attorney. I'm a, you know, I thought, you know, I said, Mr. Natsis, do you mind if I ask you some questions? He said, absolutely. And I start asking question after question after question. Because my concern was, they've been looking for a year and a half for a house. They're not happy with the broker. What's happening with that, right? Right. So about a half an hour into my questions, uh, I could feel there was a comfort level. So I kind of put my notebook down on the table and I said, I said, I like you and I think you guys like me. Why don't we just get started and do some business? And he says, in a kind of firm, he says, Christoph, my wife decided to hire you the first time she spoke to you on the phone. And I said, great, then what am I doing here for an interview? He said, I just wanted to meet you in person. That's it. So we, I took the wife out, we looked at some houses. Three weeks later, we opened escrow for over 10 million. And it's all on TV because I was on a TV show at the time and we did the, the whole show was showing them find the house, buying the house, the whole thing. And right. so they bought a house for 10 million. I sold their house for almost 5 million. Their friend bought a house for me for 4.7 million. Then his secretary, I sold her condo for 500 and she bought a condo for 1.3. That all happened within 90 days of our first phone call. Right. So, so it took four years to monetize, but we did 24 million in deals in 90 days from that first monetization of videos. And what I love is <laughs> earlier, earlier we talked about your initial doubles and the fact that you hired Tom Ferry. Uh -huh. And I think it's, it's so valuable that he said, look, stick with it. And that's exactly what a coach, you know, is supposed to do. Yeah. Help you create the vision for your company yeah. and make sure you stay true to who you are and what you want your future to be. And I love Tom. He's, he's a great friend of my out desk. He refers business to us all the time and we refer business to him. And um, I love the power of that story for if you're listening right now. Um, I can tell you, you, and you want to be in the luxury world, you want to double your business. One of the most powerful things you can do is hire a coach, somebody just like Christoph did. Tom Ferry is a great example of the value of coaching. Uh, we all, there's not an agent I know that doesn't have ups and downs in their career. That's in right. My career, and I think it was 2006, maybe 2007, before the crash, um, where I'd gone, I think, three or four months without a single closing. I had listings, but they weren't selling and things weren't closing and you know, living in Beverly Hills in this lifestyle, it's very expensive. And when you've got no cash flow coming in, it's, it's very scary. You know, when you have more yeah. and staff and, you know, just, you know, going out to dinner in Beverly Hills is $500 for three people, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you got to take yeah. out and entertain them. Yeah. Uh, that's another story. So anyways, three, four months and coaching with Tom directly every week and we're on the phone. I said, and I was getting not depressed, but getting, I felt like I, I honestly, in my mind, I felt like I was being sucked down like a, as a, like a black hole spiral of negativity yeah. yeah, because nothing was happening. And I was prospecting every day, making calls. And I remember saying to my wife and Tom, I said, Tom, I keep making the calls every single day. Nothing's happening. It's been four months. I said to my wife, I might as well just take an off for four months and just not worked. He says, no, no, no. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep being consistent. Keep doing it. My wife says, no, no, no. You can't do that. You got to keep going to work. It's going to happen. Yep. And I remember, and I, and I do work every single day of the year, even Christmas morning, New Year's. I live, you know, five minutes away from the office. I come to the office, even for a couple hours, just to do, I like to have my home time to be my home time. So I just That's come right. here to my work and I go home. So I was at the office on Sunday morning at 8.30 and I get a phone call at the office. And it was a friend of ours. And this is back to, and this friend, uh, we met through our, our social world of socializing. And it, one of the most beautiful homes in Los Angeles that we've been to many parties at and we, my wife and I always said, this is one of the most beautiful homes in LA. And he said, Christoph, we want to talk to you about selling our house. Can you come meet us tomorrow on Monday morning? And I was yeah. like, God, this is great. Uh, and I knew the house was worth 25, 30 million. And this is 11 years ago. Today, it's double that. So, right. and at that point, I think my highest sale was like five and a half million. So I was mentally prepared. I was, yeah, mentally prepared but I wasn't quite ready for that appointment. So I called up my wife, I said, look, I'm gonna be working all afternoon, I gotta prepare for this appointment. I spent eight hours that afternoon preparing for this listing appointment. Went to see him the next morning at 8.30, met him at the house, uh, walked through the house, long and short of it, within 20 minutes, I signed the listing contract for over a year. I got 
he didn't want to pay me. He said, he asked me the commission and I said, it's 6%. He says, nope, I'm only paying you $1 million to sell this house. I wrote in $1 million. He says, um, I said, what do you want to list it for? He said, what's it worth? I said, 22, 23 million. He says, what do you want to list it for? I said, 26 and a half million. He says, nope, I want to list it for 30 million. I said, well, uh, if I sell the house in the next 30 to 60 days, is that okay? He says, no, because it was October. He says, we're not leaving the country till July. So the kids got to finish school, which is why I think he wanted the higher price. And, you know, that's why I said, he said the time price. frame. Yeah. He wanted a high price. He said, well, I need a longer listing, right? right. Get so anyways, we listed it and we did sell it for 22 and a half million. <laughs> exactly what you told him. <laughs> but it was four months of nothing happening. And cash flow was like almost non-existent at that point in time. So I had this signed contract with a potential million dollar commission, 30 million. How am I going to market this house? And we did videos. We put in magazine covers. I don't know how quite I finagled all that, but I did. And we ended up selling it. But so don't get discouraged. Keep, keep at it no matter the worst days. Just keep doing what you're doing. What is your option? Go home, sit and be depressed and eat comfort foods or whatever, or keep going after your dreams and goals because eventually they will happen. So, so I just wanted to bring that thought in that don't get discouraged. Just keep moving forward and keep your mindset positive because if you keep doing that, the magic will happen. How long, if, a, if an agent wants to transition in and we're about to wrap up guys. So if you have any questions, Christoph and I will be on Facebook after this. You can you know, ask questions if you're watching this in a replay mode or, or you know, later in the week, or we get you um, via email. We'll answer questions as you go, but we're, we're about to end. Christoph, how long does it take to break into luxury, number one? And, our, and a follow-up question is, how long should I expect it to take to build a, an influencer kind of marketing strategy using video and social media? Those are the two, I think, questions that you can weigh on heavily to help our audience. That's a really good question. The way you asked it just brought to my thought three different things. So uh, my initial reaction to that is three to four years minimum for yes. all of those. Because when I look back and think about when I transitioned to Beverly Hills, it took about three or four years to go from selling $280,000 houses to really start getting some good traction in the luxury marketplace. Okay. Three to four years. Uh, when I look at the video marketing, it took about four years from starting, starting that to start monetizing that. Mm -hmm. With my website and uh, uh, marketing, it took about four years building the website before I started getting deals from the website. Yes. Social media, it took about four years doing social media consistently before I started getting referrals and deals from that. So pretty much across everything, the time frame is about four years from what I've seen. That. Why? Why do you think that is? I mean, that's pretty consistent. Yeah, it is consistent. I, I think it takes time for people. To, people need to know you, like, and trust you before they'll do business with you. And that even means an agent, meaning if there's an agent that you meet somewhere at a conference um, and then you, they follow you on social media, they may not know you, they may have heard you, they may have heard you speak, but they don't really know you. But if from that point that they meet you over time, they see you consistently, meaning I do a lot of, I do consistent content. I mean, four to five posts a day on all, every platform. On so, all of them. So they should be able to see me somewhere, somehow. Uh, so they see me consistently and it's top of mind recognition. And then there's comfort. And now I'm doing more and more videos, not just the houses and the parties and the lifestyle. I'm doing videos kind of behind the scenes of my day-to-day -day life and experiences and the challenges I deal with, how I'm helping clients, what I like literally just talk about what, whatever is pertinent that day in an escrow or the negotiation. I'm trying to do videos every day about what's going on to help educate agents and people. And last year we did like five, six referrals. We did like a quarter million in referral business from agents. And I'll say, well, what makes you, what made you think of me or remember me? They met me in passing at a conference or they heard me speak at a conference. They followed me on social media. They see me consistently. But the agents say, primarily the agents say they like my kind of how-to videos and the behind the scenes videos. Like I did a video of, of uh, I was talking about sewer line inspections in LA and how sometimes in this particular property that was in Bel Air, they could not find the sewer clean out. Do you know what a sewer clean out? A sewer clean out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send the camera outside, they couldn't find it. So they had to pull up the toilet in the bathroom and send the camera down the toilet. Yeah. And I, you know, the last thing I want to do is show a picture of a removed toilet in a bathroom, but I did and I talked about 
the exact situation. I said, most people today do sewer inspections and told the problem, told the resolve, and this is what's happening. She said she saw that video. She didn't know about that. And that's why she called me for a referral. And it was a property I sold for $8 million. So, uh, so again, giving value, whether I'm giving value to agents, to potential sellers, potential buyers, or just anybody, giving value to them uh, without expecting something in return, the stuff will come in return anyways. I love it. Well, we're going to end. Christoph, you've been amazing today. This has been awesome. What's the one thing you want to leave the audience with? Like, how would they get a hold of you? And then what's the one thing you'd, you'd like to leave the audience with today? Get a hold of me. It's really simple. Just Google my name. You'll find me all over the place. It's Everywhere. pretty really simple. <laughs> I'm on every platform that I'm aware of. And I do <laughs> it um, yep. You can friend me on Facebook, but I'll send you to my business page because I've been full for like 10 years or nine years. So but all the other platforms, you can follow me and they're open, so there's no limits. Um, what do I want to leave you with? Um, believe in yourself. Um, always keep your mindset positive. Despite of the, in our business, it's like a roller coaster all day long. You know, I wake up with a good attitude. Sometimes I wake up and I just, sometimes I wake up with a bad attitude or we're feeling upset. You know, it happens. Yeah. But I have to quickly catch that and focus on how can I contribute to my clients? Coming to the office with a bad attitude or being upset isn't going to help my clients. It's going to help me get more deals. It's going to help close that escrow. It's going to help that seller sell their home. So right. keep yourself focused. Keep positive. Be consistent. Be happy. Do affirmations every day. Meditate every day. Be your best self. Um, don't hold back. And don't be afraid and always be testing and trying. I think those are my final words of advice. <laughs> I love it, man. Um, we're, we've just listed uh, your website and where to follow you on YouTube. Christoph, cool. thank, thanks so much for your time today. It's been, this has been really fun, actually. Um, and I really appreciate everything yeah, you've shared today. We should do it again. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we we will. Talk about. We didn't even get to the other points, but it's okay. Next time. Yeah, well, there's a lot There's a lot that we unpacked here today, and, and we will have you back for a number two. I will suggest to you guys that are following me, I mean, follow me on all the platforms, but in particular, follow my YouTube channel. Because any video like this video, once we get it, it'll go on my YouTube channel, uh, and that way you can access all the interviews I've done, my speaking engagements, which I've done many of them, on my TV segments, and you can just, just follow what I do. And you know, make, don't do it my way. Do, do what I do in a way that makes sense for you, your personality, your lifestyle and your community. Um, if I worked in Malibu or in Maui on the beach, I wouldn't be wearing pinstripe suits and ties every day. I'd be wearing flip-flop shorts and a t-shirt, right? So right. be yourself, be authentic. Uh, that was the one thing I'll just leave it with uh, at the Video Influencer Summit that we had uh, a month ago in Colorado. There were 24 top video influencers in North America speaking, and I know most of them. We all basically say the same thing in different ways. Consumers today want authenticity. They want real. Why is it that the number one TV shows are reality TV? And, and for me personally, I'm in Beverly Hills. I dress maybe flashy or bougie to some people, but that's just me. Yeah. Not, that's just who I am. I like to be dressed and I like to wear fancy things. And, and I'm in Beverly Hills. So that's my lifestyle. So I purposely, that's purposely why I don't edit my videos. That's purposely why I do the live or the, just the non-edited walking tours because I'm a very down to earth, down home kind of person. People yeah. may not know that just seeing a picture of me or seeing a quick clip of me, they might think, oh, that stuck up Beverly Hills guy. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but that's not who I am. And that's, it was never who I was. So I try to be purposely really authentic and natural um, so that people will relate more to me as opposed to what they think I am. So. I love that, man. I love that. MJ says, thank you for meeting. Um, when things are slow, the night is very dark. So I think that is a, a real situation for us real estate brokers and agents out there. You know, our business is challenging. There's a lot of competition. And so having yourself stand out and being different like you have done is really the avenue that we all need to go down. So again, Christoph, thanks for being here. Appreciate you, brother. We'll, we'll have you back. This has been great. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you don't have an assistant, then you are an assistant and you're telling yourself you're not worth more than 10 bucks an hour because you can hire a, a real estate virtual assistant from us for, for, I mean, for pennies of what you're actually worth. Most real estate people are worth thousands of dollars a day or an hour just prospecting, just picking up the phone and talking to people. You no. should not do your own paperwork. You should not do your own marketing assistant work. 
Love you guys. Go on our website, myoutdesk.com. Get a consultation. It's free. We will help you double your business. Christoph, thanks for being here today. Appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. See you later.